So as we move into looking at how the team's shape will, will come together, we're going to start with how we're going to defend in the attacking half of the field. And this is part of the style, right? We could draw up a diagram where we're defending on the um, defensive half of the field first and then move up, but we want to have a more aggressive defending um, style. We want our forwards to be part of our team defending, uh, and it's very, very important for their long-term development to make sure that they understand that they have to defend. So. That's part of the style there. The second part of the style is going to be a more pressing style, but not necessarily a full press high up the field. So as you can see where the blue players are drawn in this, you have a just a little setup where we're kind of back where the um, build out line was in 7v7. So we've kind of dropped back to get a compact space. We're in two zones. The vast majority of the players are in the central zones between the black lines. And we have, you know, two central players here that are kind of eating up gaps. So by compacting the middle, we've made two passes here kind of obvious, right? So the defender can pass the ball out here, right? Or they can play the ball back to the goalkeeper and both of those passes are going to um, be less dangerous than a central pass all of the kind of center areas are very difficult to get through because of the tight compact shape between the forwards and the midfielders right um, the forwards are kind of in this are the, the forward defenders are kind of in this line here which makes a pass coming out to this side highly unlikely to be successful Right. So we have two obvious passes that we're trying to force to, um, making the play predictable, which becomes much easier to react to those passes um, as they as they happen in, in real time. So that's what we're looking to do there. Make play predictable, force to the outside or force back and then shift over. So as we move on to part two of this, we have now shifted the um, ball has been played to the outside you have everybody on one half of the field here all of the defenders on one half of the field we're not worried about these players remember we're talking about 9v9 right so we're talking about 11 and 12 year olds highly unlikely with even just a little bit of pressure from this defender right here that this player is going to be able to pick their head up and play a 30 35 yard switching ball over top of everybody if they can do that, there probably wasn't enough pressure on the ball in the first place, but again, just unlikely for that to happen. And even if it could, that this defender over here, down on the bottom in the middle of the field, right, this balancing defender would still be able to then run out here and kind of slow that down while the ball traveled. So every pass now is kind of difficult. We have supporting cover on both sides of the ball from down here. This pass might be able to be um, Pat made, but this player might be able to then intercept it or at least come over here and screen it out if they receive it so they can't turn and we've kind of got them locked in. So that's the idea, right? Once we make the ball play to the outside, can we continue to make play predictable by forcing it into uh, help defenders and by forcing it into help defenders, can we force a difficult ball, a bad touch, a ball that pops up and then read the cues of the game on when to um, steal the ball and go forward. And if we're able to then steal the ball in this general area, you have a red team that's a little bit more spread out and we might be able to then quickly make a pass in through here and get out a defender, you know, 2v1, 3v2, however that happens to be. All right. So that's how we're looking to do that. An aggressive kind of pressing style higher up the field in the attacking half. Everybody's helping defend. Can we force the ball out of the middle in a predictable way and shift over maintaining compact space and trying to force a turnover? So second uh, situation that we're looking at now is just in the defensive half of the field. So if you go back to the previous slide, you'll see that the shape still looks like a 3-2-3. Three, three. If you were to look in this shape, however, it looks more like a three defenders, one kind of holding central midfielder, then another line of three, and then a high forward. Right, so it looks a little bit more like a 3-1-3-1 because our wide attacking players have dropped deeper in the midfield to help with that compact space, make it more difficult to play through the middle, and make the switching balls more difficult. So as we said before, the shape is a 3-2-3, uh, three, three, but as the situation changes, 
the shape might look a little bit different as well, but the positions stay the same. And this goes back to our general movement patterns, right, of how that works. So if you look at this, everybody is in the middle of the field, right? The first thing we need to do is protect the goal, uh, make central penetration very difficult. We have uh, pressure on the ball right here in a way that makes it difficult to go out the other side and difficult to go out this way right and difficult to penetrate centrally obviously all these passes become very difficult as we're going through there so just like in the last um, last slide we looked at what's the most obvious pass and now the most obvious pass the most easily made pass is a negative pass backwards right outside of the central area so that's what we're looking to try and force here you can have the goalkeeper off their line about six or seven yards so that if a ball um, comes through they'll be able to come run out and, and collect that they're not sitting back on their goal line um, this ball is you know 30 yards from goal maybe 25 yards from goal unlikely for an 11 year old to just pick their head up under pressure and put it over the top of them um, so we want to get that goalkeeper out there as well so hopefully we can force the pass out wide and backwards and then we read those cues right so the ball goes backwards and the cues are for everyone to shift up and to the left and we can pack those space so right away by everybody shifting up including the goalkeeper we have a situation now where this player right here and this player right here are offside all right so that's important for us to understand so that by stepping up we're now taking two of the opponents completely out of the play and they have to make um find new space to be able to step up into we've got again pretty much everybody right in the middle of the field here as that's happening so it's compact across the field and we have these kind of screening areas where this player is making that central pass hard the forward is making the pass back here difficult the positioning of this player right is making the forward pass difficult so there's a lane in here but that there's defenders in there who are clogging that up as well so this is what we're looking to try and do force the ball to the outside away from the central areas make central penetration difficult and then force back passes so really here this player is going to be able to hopefully get tighter on the ball everybody else is going to be able to continue that space up and the only place this person can go is probably back even more and then we have this process of now we're chasing them away from the goal. We're pushing them higher up the field. They're running away from the goal. It's easier to um, force bad passes, force bad touches. Then we win the ball. We're going right at goal there. So, um, again, it's a, it's a compact shape. It's a system where we're looking to do the basics first, which is prevent central penetration, put it wide, keep it wide, um, and then reading the cues on when we can tackle. Make play predictable force the ball um, into wide places and, and back places that we know where it's going to go and that it's easier for everybody to read the play together.